This is Chris Messersmith with RTC TV and we have a special report over Pokemon Go. Yeah, you heard that. Pokemon Go, we're going to talk about that. Uh, first, we'll talk about the history of Pokemon and where that all started. The first Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Green versions for the Game Boy, came to the Nintendo Game Boy system in Japan on February 7th, 1996. So it's been 20 years since this uh, this sport, I guess you could call it these days. Uh, it started simply enough as a hobby of Satoshi Tahiri, who formed Game Freak. Uh, there's actually seven generations of Pokemon. Uh, I won't get into that because that might come into play later as I ask some other trainers some trivia questions. So, Pokemon Go launched on July 6th, 2016. We are now uh, July 21st, which is 15 days after, and we have just seen people walking around with their phones out everywhere you go. So I brought in some trainers with me today to talk about their experiences. Uh, guys, what do you think about Pokemon Go and how has it been for you? Uh, I think Pokemon Go is a good experience for the whole community, really, because you see people out on the streets more than you normally would. It's pretty addicting. It's pretty fun. It's very addicting. It's very, yeah. Like, you get into it pretty quick. So have you guys, uh, how do I want to say this? Have you, you haven't stayed in Rochester the whole time, right? You've traveled. Where all have you guys, where has this game taken you? Well, when it Indianapolis. Actually, when it came Indianapolis. Out, I was in um, Florida. Florida. I was in the Keys, so I got pretty good, pretty good amount of water Pokemon I found because there's just water everywhere. <laughs> right. So here's a here's a question. Um, we haven't traveled too far. I mean, I I haven't been out of Indiana. He's been to Florida. So would you say that you would find different Pokemon in Florida versus I here? Think that it can be smaller than just states because if you go to um. Like if you go to Fort Wayne or Indy, I think you can get a different. Yeah, I was definitely getting a different selection last night than when I was in town. Mhm. Mm so have you guys captured any gyms around Rochester yet, or? My little sister held the courthouse for like twenty hours. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hours. She almost got there one day. Yeah, she almost got like a bonus for it. Yeah, that's interesting because. I mean, I see these gyms being held for maybe a few minutes at a time, and it's just like. I can't imagine holding it for a whole day. Uh, the way I see it, I think you should be rewarded a little bit more. I think you get 20 coins for holding a gym for a day, so uh, hopefully they raise that reward. Um, what level are you guys? Uh, I'm level 11. Level I'm level 11. 16. Oh, 16. 10. 7. 7, okay. So we, what, what team do we got here? Mystic. Mystic. Yeah, blue team. Mystic. Yellow team. Mystic. Man, you got a bunch of Mystic guys in here. I'm Valor, so oh. I'm not with any of you guys. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Um, so how often do you guys actually play this game? I know that, you know, we, we all have our 24-hour days, but, and you know, we all have things to do like work and whatnot, but what? how often do you guys play? Um, lately, I mean, I've been on it. You know, pretty frequently, just when I'm walking around, because you gotta get your extra steps to hatch your eggs. Yes. So uh, that's really something that makes you want to click on the app whenever mm -hmm. you're really walking around. So uh, pretty fr frequently. What uh, Pokemon did you all catch first? I started with a Squirtle. Squirtle. I started with Charmander. Same. Charmander. Charmander. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wilson, you went with the, the Squirtle, huh? Well, we're going to do a quick round of uh, Pokemon trivia here. So, I'm going to ask, did any of you guys uh, play the Game Boy versions of Pokemon? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Cool, cool. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm going to start from the left side. So, Tanner, your question is... 
Pokemon. What color of the Pokemon games was actually? I'll just I'll make this a little easier. You only have to name one. What color of the Game Boy games for Pokemon was in Generation Two? Generation Two is mm -hmm. uh, Ruby and Sapphire. Which one's oh, wrong? Silver. Oh, uh, uh, Gen Two. Gold. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Gold and Silver, and then Chris. Gold and Silver came out in 1999, and then Fruit. Silver was, or Crystal was in 2000, so. Yeah, Crystal. Um, this one's a little bit harder, Connor. Okay. How many Pokemon were in the first generation um, game? 151. Correct, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah buddy, know. nice. <laughs> solid, <laughs> man. <laughs> Why did I know that? Very solid, okay. I know everything about Pokemon. <laughs> I'm impressed. Books. Really? Yes, they were so helpful. <laughs> Seems like it. You got everything. Oh, my drink's gone. You took my drink. I forgot. Okay, this one's easy, Natalie. You ready? Yep. How many kilometers do you have to walk to hatch each of the eggs? How many? What are the different Two, distances? Five and ten. Correct. Yeah, you got you got a good one. You're lucky. Okay, and Wilson, your question is going to be: Do you know why Pokemon Go was created? Um, my best guess would just be that people want to play Pokemon on their phones instead of other portable devices. So instead of carrying around multiple things, you just have your phone. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you both. But the answer is actually that it is the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. I don't know if you guys uh, paid attention to this, but in 2014, um, Google always does an April Fool's joke, and they did an April Fool's joke that there was going to be a real-life Pokemon game. Yeah. And it actually happened two years later, and we were just like, what? No way. But uh, another thing we're going to talk about here is their best experiences. I want you guys to go around and talk about your craziest experience and how it ended up. I can start. Okay, go ahead, Wilson. So I went to West Lafayette, and there's a ridiculous amount of Pokey Stops there, which is awesome. So I was just sitting there, getting the Pokey Stops every couple minutes, and then a lady walks by in a full Pikachu costume. And I thought, oh, that was a whole another level of commitment. So I respect it. <laughs> That's commitment. Um, my crazy experience probably when I we I found an involved Bulbasaur. I think it's called an Ivysaur. Mm -hmm. And I had like two Pokeballs left. It was running really low. So I caught it, but he got out. And I was really upset. There was a Pokestop really nearby, so I ran to it. And then I got like three Pokeballs from that, and I ran back to where it was, and it was still there. Wow. And I caught it again, and it got out and ran away. Mm. Oh, it was really upsetting. A frustrating day still there. Gets <laughs> I think my best Pokemon Go experience was I was just laying in my bed. It was like 12 o'clock at night, and I turned on Pokemon Go, and then there was a Scyther right in my room. And he was like 410 CP or something. And so I just throw one Pokeball, and boom, I have Scyther, and I can go to bed happy. Nice. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Can't beat that. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. If you um, Your house is so close to Probably my, my craziest experience was um, when I was on my, at my orientation for AU, somebody um, on the tour, we went by the big fountain that's on the campus there, and somebody on the tour was like, how many people over by the fountain are playing Pokemon Go? And there's just like a crowd of people and they all put their hands up. Yeah, absolutely crazy experiences. I'll, t I'll talk about my experience I just had last night. I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana and uh, traveled to IPFW campus. And there were at least 80 people, 80 to 100 people playing, just sitting in the grass. And it's just ridiculous how it brings so many people together just to play a game that is seen uh, kind of ridiculous by a lot of people. But um, So now we're going to talk about any advice that you guys want to give. Is there anything that you can um, advise people on for playing Pokemon Go? Maybe not walk out in front of cars or you know anything like that? Don't do it uh, Yeah, definitely be careful because it can be dangerous if you're not paying attention. Especially, it's probably worse than texting and driving because you're trying to you're just like catch a Pokemon instead of type a couple words. 
So, yeah. I mean, that would be some good advice. Uh, any in-game advice from any of you guys? I would say don't power up if you're just starting the game. Don't power up your players straight away because then you'll be further away from being able to evolve them later. Oh, use a lucky egg before you had, like right before you, your eggs are about to hatch because you get yes, sir. Uh, XP. Definitely. Um, I don't have that much experience, but um, you join join Mystic. <laughs> there you go, join Mystic. That's what you get from Tanner. So now we've gone into some of the experiences we've had as well as advice, and now I want you guys to talk about. I mean, I know this is a fun game for a lot of people, but what are some of the benefits that people can experience from playing Pokemon Go? Um, I think it just gets people out walking around, and uh, exercise is always good. And it's uh, honestly, you talk to more people that you wouldn't normally talk to. Like I've just had conversations with people I've never even met just because I play this game. Same. You've like learned a lot from other people about the game, actually. Yeah, I think it's good that everyone you kind of meet, and they know you're playing, they give you tips, and they mm -hmm. give you advice on what they think you do. Right. Anything, Tanner? I mean, I completely agree. I feel like it's a great way to get people that might not normally exercise to go out and walk around. Right, yep really good for you. Yep, uh, I've noticed that it brings a lot of people together with common interests, obviously, and that has worked out well. Um, it's been a great game to play. If you haven't tried it, feel free to download it and try not to get too addicted because it, it is pretty addicting. Um, but we're going to get these trainers out of here, let them go catch some Pokemon, and maybe you guys will see them uh, on the top of a gym here soon. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you guys later, and uh, good luck catching Pokemon out there. Thanks. So for an inside scoop on, for, for those of you that don't play Pokemon Go, I'm gonna go through the introduction process and how it works out for you. Uh, as far as the technology, you'll need an Android 4.4 firmware or greater, iOS 8 or greater, you need Wi-Fi 3G or 4G, and GPS signal because the game runs off of GPS. Um, it uses software that is not only able to map out the entire world's terrain, but it also tracks your location using the GPS. Um, so when you download this app, which you can search in the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, you will find Pokemon Go. And it's a free game, so you can download it for free. Uh, there's in-game purchases, so you, you will be able to spend money inside the game uh, but for the introduction, it'll, it'll walk you through a character customization screen. So you'll be able to create your own character, change the color of your hair, do some basic customization, and uh, assign yourself a name. Um, and then at that point, you will be prompted to choose between three Pokemon. You'll get to choose a Charmander, a Squirtle, or a uh, Bulbasaur. And after you choose that uh, Pokemon, that will be uh, the first catch that you will have in the game. Uh, and then the open world begins and you will be uh, shown a full map of basically the world we live in. And the things that you'll see on the map would include Poke Stops, which are a uh, blue square floating cube that you can collect things at, such as Pokeballs, potions, uh, raspberries, and you'll see Pokemon gyms where uh, trainers can take over the gym. If you hold a gym for more than a day, then you can collect 20 coins. You'll see Pokemon that you can actually catch. And there's a radar that uh, signifies the distance that you can see any objects. And if you see any moving grass, then that is a potential place that a Pokemon is. So that is where the uh, adventure comes into play. You can go find Pokemon out in the wild. Uh, it can be dangerous, so make sure you are fully aware of your surroundings when you play. Um, some of the other items that are in the game, there's uh, revives, which you would use to restore a Pokemon that's dead. There are eggs, and I asked Natalie uh, before what the distances are for the eggs. And if you walk two kilometers, five kilometers, or ten kilometers, you will hatch some of the various eggs that hatch different Pokemon. Uh, there's a lucky egg. You eat that and it gives you uh, an experience boost for 30 minutes. There's an incense item which gives you uh, an extra attraction from Pokemon. 
for the next 30 minutes. And there is lure modules, which this is the object that brings most people together when playing Pokemon Go. So what you do is you'll go to a Pokestop or a area of a lot of Pokestops and you use a lure module on the Pokestop and it basically spawns extra Pokemon for the next 30 minutes. So when people see a lure module active on their GPS map, they're going to basically fly to the area and see if they can catch some extra Pokemon. So that's why you see uh, a lot of people playing in one location. And it's very interesting how it can bring people together. But I just thought I'd give you guys a rundown on Pokemon Go. Uh, I hope you guys get some time to try it out and uh, see if you can catch some Pokemon. And this is Chris Messersmith with RTC TV.